What is up guys, BJ Dell back with an all new weekly art challenge review video. Last week's word was hot air balloon, so let's see what you guys came up with. All right, guys, so let's jump into the video. This week's word was hot air balloon. So let's see what you guys did. First one up is Debbie. And I really like this super cute, a very good kind of storytelling piece. Uh, so you've got the hot air balloon here, which is trying to get off the ground, but just can't because Fatty McFatty Pants Elephant is just too darn heavy. And I think Debbie did a great job at driving home this story using just basically this one panel. Uh, so you've got the face of the hot air balloon. You've got the furrow brow. You you can tell that he's struggling which is only you know kind of accentuated by the droplets of sweat coming out of here the little beads popping off the head you can really tell that this guy is heavy and and he is struggling to get him off the ground the way that the ropes snap here in the background and kind of have the motion to him kind of drives that home too so i think debbie did a great job at taking a storytelling approach to the overall design characters themselves are really cute you got the like i said the hot air balloon here cute elephant even the little flower down here that's kind of laid back and reacting to the whole scene and almost about to get crushed is is really fantastic so good job there i do like the overall color scheme as well uh the fact that it uses brown for the lines rather than going with a heavy black i think gives a, a nice natural kind of muted feel to the overall design and the color choices throughout really good too uh, as far as the uh, light source coming in here, the shadows and highlights are really good and consistent throughout. So you've got the light source coming down here. And like I said, everything is really consistent throughout the design as far as that goes. Uh, line weight, it looks like you did some line weights too, kind of tying into the light source. You got the front of the basket here with the thinner line than the back. So good job there. The one thing I would have changed is I think the ropes themselves are a little bit too heavy and a little bit too consistent with some of the other lines. They kind of blend in and don't stand out as much and it just kind of muddies up the design a little bit. So I would have done one of two things, either made these ropes a lot more thin or made these super thick and then made the rest of everything thinner, which we'll talk about that here here in a second with the next design uh but that's the one thing that that kind of stood out to me that i would have you know just changed those it looks to be a little bit too much throughout um and then the one last thing that i would do the the background here choice it's really good i like the blue and the texture that you've got uh, the only thing is it reminds me of sky and the problem you run into when you use you know a sky background and then decide to add in a uh, actual ground layer here is that it just looks too much like sky and that the, the the ground looks off. So what I would have probably done here is just go in and I wouldn't actually go in and color color everything. Just kind of, you know, throw in some hints of color, some hints of green. And I think that would have kind of brought that home a little bit more. It would have been a little bit easier to read. And like I said, just kind of fade it out. I wouldn't have colored in exactly perfectly everything but just this touch of color kind of goes a long way to break that up so just a little bit like that i think that would have kind of popped that out from that blue background but absolutely fantastic job debbie so thanks for sharing that this week uh, next up is cameron and cameron went with hot air balloons so you know star wars puns are always a good idea and i think cameron did a fantastic job on this uh you've got chewy man in the back here and pulling out the balloon letting the air out to kind of drive uh the the two across the sky here and i love kind of the overall weight that the balloon has the motion that it has so a few things there you've got the the air coming out here of course and the way that the balloon is directing You've got Han here kind of hanging off the front, which because of the weight then draws this basket and leans it towards the back. So I think that dynamic motion is just really good. Uh, and speaking of the motion, the, the pose of Han is done super, super well. Like how he's, you know, kind of hanging off this thing instead of just standing, you know, rigidly. This has a really good dynamic action pose to it. And same thing with Chewie here, letting out the air is just really great. I think Ralph called this out in the comment section on Facebook too. Just the, the folds and the creases here and the rubber of the balloon are done so well. It adds, you know, su such a sense of, sense of depth and dimension to this. You can see that rubber just kind of stretching underneath Chewie's, you know, 
arms here underneath his armpit and just underneath the the weight of his pole and it's just done really really well and i know cameron had posted a few different versions of this kind of works in progress and the last one was finally with this background in i think it just really brings it all home the clouds are done fantastically and then the part in the background here with the the building coming up there out of the sky is just really really good i think it's just a fantastic job and i love seeing it so much so um the other thing here too that i talked about with debbie's and i said we would come back to is you see the the ropes here so cameron went really thick with these ropes and it, i think it works really well just because you can see the lines used on the balloon the basket even the characters themselves are really thin so the the ropes stand out kind of as a separate design element Element. as you can see then comparing it with this one the ropes were kind of close to everything else so they didn't really stand out they just kind of all blended together so on debbie's i said either you know make these thinner or make these the same size or even a little bit thicker and everything else a little bit thinner and you can see kind of what i was talking about there and why it works with this and it just it just adds a lot to the design so thanks for submitting that this week cameron uh next up is dominic and dominic did a monkey hot air balloon and i think this is great once again a really cool design choice you know of course you could have just added a monkey as the the hot air balloon and left it at that but added the banana as the basket down here and i, I think that was really really smart uh, i like the attaching lines here too once again talking back about the ropes uh, just this kind of sketchy you know loose feeling i think works really well and i like how it ties everything in you've got the light source coming in from this direction which works fantastic so the way the clouds kind of trail off you can see the the base background color is this blue uh, but the clouds are really thick almost to like a solid white right up here in the corner and that lets the viewer know that's where the light source is coming in from and Dominic did just a great job of making this seem really natural the way the light falls across the balloon coming from right there it just looks fantastic with the way that he did the solid white clouds up here and just ties everything in super super well uh the one thing i probably would have adjusted here is the inside of the balloon here i think looks a little bit too much like the background um of course the inside of the balloon usually is going to be if the you know the fire is not on and it's not being you know blown up right then it's going to be a little bit darker so what i would do there is uh, just darken that up it's going to add a little bit more you know dimension to it you're going to make this look like there's actually you know some shadow in there and I'd probably pull this you know darker here to where it meets the circle coming out and around and then as this trails off back into the part you can see a little bit more you know kind of trail that off into a little bit lighter color and you can see it looks a little bit more natural that way it adds a little bit more of a depth and three-dimensional quality and the biggest part for me is it separates it from that background and it doesn't look like it ties in as much so if we back this out now you can see you know the difference between the two this is a lot darker and this it honestly looks like the the sky is just like poking through that back part of the balloon so other than that that that's the main thing i would change but fantastic job dominic thanks for sharing that this week next up is kale and kale has a blowfish carrying a worm the blowfish being the actual hot air balloon and i just love this one so much it's really cute uh as far as character design fantastic job on the characters they've got their own personalities and look really cute together i do like the line weights too you want super thick around the characters especially the worm here you can see the differences in the line weights it's really thick around this outside part and then you know this inner eye comes in and these lines are a lot thinner but you can see how went ahead and pulled this down to where it just doesn't break off it looks natural coming around here sometimes when you go thick around the outside it just almost looks like that sticker feel that you just trace this made it bigger and then when it gets thinner on the inside the lines don't match up and i think he did a great job of adjusting that so fantastic job there uh, as far as shadows and highlights too those all look really good i would have probably added in a few more shadows here so the one thing the way that this pulls in like we talked about uh with the hot air balloon the way chewy had that rope or had the uh the balloon kind of tucked in and pulled um this has a lot of weight here and i think gail did a great job of pulling this rope in and you see how it kind of 
creases into the skin here so it adds a lot of weight since the rope does have weight and is heavier and sticks out I would probably go ahead and put in a another shadow down the back of the rope get the right size here just to show that that has some weight to it and it does give off its own shadow just pulling a shadow there down the back of that rope and then also down the back of this rope as well and then the way that the spines come off here all the spines here are giving off shadows around the character but then once you get back to the the shadowed part there's no shadows that the spines themselves are giving off. So that's one thing to always keep in mind, even when you've got the, you know, the solid shadow part in here, if these give off shadows, you probably still want to add an extra shadow in here just to kind of continue the pattern that was used. Uh, so with this, just adding an extra shadow layer and then just going back in and like I said, just throwing the, the extra shadows in there. So you've got kind of shadows on top of shadows. Sometimes I'll use two shadow layers. Sometimes I'll use three. It honestly just depends on what the design calls for. Uh, but just an overall fantastic job. I love the, the background here, the way that you've got the, the squared off plus, you know, just the, the squiggly lines, just a very dynamic shape. It's kind of like um, Amy Springer's last, was it last week? The, um, the Circus Punk with the Astronaut kind of reminds me of that. Just a really dynamic shape to the background, which draws the viewer in. But just a really great job, Kale. So thanks for, for submitting that this week. And next up is Ken. And Ken has the Owl Hot Air Balloon. And this one is just really good. I love the color choices. The, the blue here ties in well to this brown. And I think it really pops against the two. Um, the reason that I, I pulled this one up this week is because of the way, and I think, I can't remember who said it, but somebody had, had chimed in on the comment section in Facebook and had talked about the way here that the eyes, you see, the eyes are basically going to be printed on the fabric that makes up the balloon and the way that the stitching comes in and the way that the balloon is blown up, you know, these eyes kind of just form around those creases and Ken just did a fantastic job of making this look super realistic and this is one thing to really keep in mind when you're doing drawings of you know anything that contains fabric it could be you know people dressed in shirts or, or you know what have you uh, curtains if you've got a print and that's basically what this is is a print and then you have creases in the fabric itself you know that print is going to kind of disform and and change with the way that the fabric goes so I, that's why i wanted to pick this this week because ken just did a fantastic job of making that look really realistic as far as the way that 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 print reacts to the overall curves of the balloon so for example's sake let's go ahead and do something here so let's say you've got a person get this the right size here so you got a person that's kind of let's say they're kind of bending over to pick up something off the ground okay and this is kind of their arm you know reaching down here and this person's bending over to reach something and you've got a fold here in the front the way that the you know the shirt comes down and let's say they've just got a round circle so from the front you know if you had this this shirt and they had a round circle Actually, let's just do like a donut because I'm wearing my donut shirt today. So, you know, they've got this donut on their shirt. This is going to be a perfectly round circle. But when they bend like this, instead of having this, you know, be round, it's going to look weird. That needs to kind of curve around with the curve of whatever you've got going on. So the way that this crease comes in here it's going to adjust and kind of morph this around so you need to make sure that you know that follows the the same creasing pattern as as what the the lines do here and that's one thing a lot of people forget about and it looks really weird uh you know when you start to to do a design and it doesn't match up something looks off and you might not be able to tell exactly what it is and you know that's one of the things people kind of overlook so Good job for uh, Ken kind of noticing that, putting it into action. So that's why I wanted to uh, uh, include his in this video so you can kind of touch on that. And last but not least, we've got Rachel's. Rachel did kind of like a hot air balloon sky ship, uh, kind of from every like uh, Japanese RPG ever. And I think this is fantastic. I love this so much. I'm a big fan of the, the black ink on craft paper, this kind of sketch drawing paper. And 
this one just turned out really, really well. I love sharing traditional pieces as well on these videos. So if you guys are, you know, following along with these and you don't have an iPad or a tablet or a computer or anything else, definitely send in your tr traditional work based on these because it's what Rachel did this week and it turned out really well. Um, like I said, I'm a huge fan of the style, especially not just, you know, doing this on the craft paper with the black, but I love using that white ink on here just to do the highlights. I think that looks so fantastic. And Rachel did a great job of varying the line weights here. You've got a really thick down here at the bottom where the shadows are. Same thing here on the back. This is where the shadows are. So a really thick line here, thick on the back of these sails. So that looks really, really well done. And I, I kind of like here just the sketchy motion that you've got going on with the top of the balloon and then down the side adds a lot of uh, dynamic motion to it as well. And just the, the use of those whites everywhere is just really, really well done. This is, uh, you know, a style that you can kind of trick doing it digitally. Uh, if you do like this style, you know, just grabbing a, a background of this craft paper and then sketching on top of it or doing, you know, black on top, you can get a, you know, a pretty close look to this and then going back in with just the, the white for the highlights, you know, you can kind of make your your own designs to kind of mimic this real you know traditional way of doing stuff so definitely play around with that if you do like this style and uh, i know a lot of people do this at cons there's like a whole kind of subset genre of cardboard art where you can get you know cardboard pieces and almost like cardboard trading cards uh with with hand-drawn art on it which i, I just really love and a lot of people use the the same black and the white and then some people will throw in some reds in there too which looks really cool but uh just really like that rachel decided to hop on board and share some traditional work so that is it for hot air balloon all right guys that's it for today's video as always thank you for watching i appreciate it if you like today's video too make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when i post new videos Last week's word was hot air balloon. This week, I went over to Patreon, asked the backers on Patreon what they wanted to see for this word. So if you guys haven't supported the channel yet on Patreon, you can hop on over, earn cool rewards, and be able to take part in cool polls like this to where you get to vote, you get to submit ideas for the words of the week, and yours might get chosen next. Who knows? Uh, so this week, number one, thanks to everybody that submitted suggestions. This one was chosen by Amy Springer and, or submitted by Amy Springer. I chose it, but it was submitted by her. And I know a lot of people are on the print on demand platforms, merch by Amazon, so on and so forth. And with Halloween right around the corner, a lot of people's minds are on autumn in the fall. So this week's word is autumn. And that one was submitted by Amy Springer. So thanks, Amy. Uh, so you guys can do a lot of different stuff with this. You could do, you know, like landscapes with the, the changing fall colors. You could do Halloween theme. There's so many different options, but Make sure you submit your designs over on Facebook. Keep creating the Learn Draw Share Art community over there. The link is in the description below for that too. That's where you meet cool people, submit your designs, and share all of your work. We want to have you guys over there. As for me, I can be found on Patreon, but also my website, bjdell.com, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.